Welcome back children. So today in this video we are moving on to yet another topic from the chapter integration. Here we start with the integration by parts. Now when do we apply integration by parts? That is if you have two functions <coughs> say you have f of x and g of x. Right? If you have two functions of this kind f of x is one function, g of x is another function. Now, if you had two functions to perform derivative, how did you find derivative for this when you had a product rule applied here? That is, d by dx of this particular expression was first function into the derivative of the second plus second function into derivative of the first. Isn't it? This was the product rule what we apply. Now here in integration there is nothing called like a product rule. Further we have something known as integration by parts. Now as we have told you there are two functions. I need to decide which is the first function and which is the second function. I choose one of this function as the first function and the second function is chosen secondly. Now what determines the first function and second function? I take I late. Now, here if you look at, there is nothing called I late in your textbook. Nor anywhere else after, if you uh, complete your 12, when you complete your, not if you complete your 12, when you complete your 12 and when you go for your higher studies, you will never see this I late again. Because ILH is only meant for 12 standard students. Because here we restrict our uh, topic to the choice of first function and second function by using the ILH. Now what is ILH? Here the first function, the I stands for, here not the first letter, I stands for inverse trigonometric function. Inverse trigonometric function. The second one, L stands for logarithmic function. Then A stands for arithmetic functions, T stands for trigonometric functions and E stands for exponential function. Now what does that mean? Suppose you are going to integrate a function of the form x log x. Okay, now my question is to find the derivative of x, I mean sorry, the integral of x log x. Now, which function will I choose as the first function? Here see, x is falling under arithmetic function, log x is falling under logarithmic function. Which comes first? Logarithmic function comes first. So this is the first function and this is my second function. Am I clear? Suppose you had a trigonometric and an exponential function in it. You will take trigonometric function as the first function and exponential function as the second function. Suppose you have an inverse trigonometric function and a trigonometric function. Then you will take inverse trigonometric function as the first function and the second function will be trigonometric functions. So according to the hierarchy that we have here, we select the first function and the second function. Now how do we integrate this? Now in order to integrate this, I apply the rule integral of f of x, g of x into dx is, so from here I will choose the first function and second function but it's not the occurrence in the form of I late. Okay. So first function into integral of the second. Okay. Minus integral of. Now this integral will remain. Integral of derivative of the first into integral of the second. And since this integral is remaining, I will have a dx here. Again I will integrate this part. Right. Now once you do one or two problems of the similar kind, more, more it will be clear to you. So, this is what you need to study from here, integration by parts. First function into integral of the second minus integral of derivative of the first into integral of the second. Now, as I have written here, let me integrate this function. x and log x. I repeat, log x is my first function, x is the second function as log x comes first and then arithmetic function x. x square plus 1, x, x cube, all these are arithmetic function. So, First function that is log x into derivative of x is 1 minus integral of derivative of the first. 
first function into sorry first function into integral of the second second integral is x square by 2 minus integral of derivative of log x 1 by x into integral of the second x square by 2 into dx so first function into integral of the second minus integral of derivative of the first into integral of the second into dx now one of the x cancels and i'll get this as x square by 2 log x this is exactly the same minus 1 by 2 remains outside the integral i have integral of x dx now this is x square by 2 into log x x square by 2 into log x minus 1 by 2 into x square by 2 plus c. Once the integration gets over, I will put the constant c. So, that gives me finally x square by 2 into log x minus x square by 4 plus c. So, this is how I integrate. Okay. Now, I shall give you one more example. That is integral of log x into dx. Integral of log x. Now, do you have two functions here? I have two functions here. I will take the first function as 1 and the second function as log x into dx. Now, which is the first function? According to Eilich, logarithmic function is the first function. So, log x is the first function and 1 is the second function. Now, how do I integrate? First function into log x into integral of x 1 that is x minus integral of derivative of the first function 1 by x into integral of the second into dx. Now if you look at x and x cancels that gives you x log x minus integral of dx. What is integral of dx? It is x minus x plus c. So this gives you the integral of x I mean log x log x. That is x log x minus x plus c. Am I clear? Now, let's come to the problem session. I have the first problem here. Integral of x sine inverse of x. x sine inverse of x. Now, here there are two functions. Can you identify two functions? x is one function. Sine inverse of x is the second function. So, which function will I choose as the first function? Using i late. Inverse trigonometry functions is chosen as the first function and the arithmetic function is chosen as the second function. So, I have here x sin inverse of x. I have written it as first function as sin inverse of x and second function as x. Now, according to the integration by parts, first function into that is sin inverse of x into integral of x. What is that? x square by 2 minus integral of Derivative of sin inverse of x that is 1 by root of 1 minus x square into integral of the second that is x square by 2 plus c. Okay, yeah, not c, uh, x square by 2 into dx because again I have to integrate it. So this I will write it as x square by 2 into sin inverse of x minus 1 by 2 into I1, I will write it as 1 by 2 times I1. Because I1 is again an integral value. So, that is why I am not putting C here. Okay. Ultimately, I will put C. So, I1 is equal to what? Integral of 1 by root of 1 minus x square into x square dx. Now, I take put x is equal to or put x is equal to sin theta. I have used this where using, I mean uh, integrating using trigonometric identity. Substitution. Okay, so what is dx now? Cos theta d theta, isn't it? So, here it becomes sin square theta by root of 1 minus sin square theta into dx is cos theta d theta. So, this is equal to integral of sin square theta cos theta by what is root of 1 minus sin square theta? 1 minus sin square theta is cos square theta. Inside the root it is. Once it comes outside it becomes cos theta d theta. Now cos theta cos theta cancels. I get it as integral of sin square theta d theta. Now how did you integrate sin square theta? I wrote this as 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2. 
in duty theta isn't it that is 1 by 2 taken outside 1 minus cos 2 theta d theta now listen we are integrating with respect to theta isn't it so 1 by 2 times theta minus sin 2 theta by 2 plus c okay sin 2 theta by 2 plus c so this is equal to 1 by 2 times theta minus sin 2 theta i'll write it as 2 sin theta cos theta by 2 because I'm now I have to re-substitute it back for theta. So 2 and 2 cancels. As when I re-substitute for theta, theta is equal to what? Sine inverse of x minus sine theta is x. Cos theta is as I have taken it here. 1 minus sine squared theta plus c. So what can I say about the integral i? i is equal to already I have x square by 2 into sine inverse of x minus 1 by 4 times because there is minus 1 by 2 here that goes with this constant okay don't forget about it minus 1 by 4 times sine inverse of x minus x root 1 minus sine in sine squared uh, sorry this is x actually sine squared x sorry sine squared x plus c1 you can write this as c1 where c1 is equal to what c1 is equal to this is c here minus c by 2 so c1 is equal to minus of c by 2 am i clear to that go through it once or twice okay now let's see the next question integral of sine inverse of x the whole square into dx now here i substitute for theta is equal to sine inverse of x Okay, theta is equal to sine inverse of x. So, what is sine theta? Sine theta is equal to x. Okay, sine theta is equal to x. Now, from here, dx is equal to what? Cos theta d theta. Is it or not? Theta is equal to sine inverse of x. Sine theta is equal to x. So, dx is equal to cos theta d theta. Now, coming back to the problem, I will write this as Sine inverse of x is what? Theta. Theta square into dx is cos theta d theta. Okay. Theta square into cos theta d theta. Now, which is the first function and which is now going to be the second function? I late. Okay. A and then t. So, here this is the first function and this is the second function. So, first function into integral of cos theta sin theta minus integral of derivative of theta square that is 2 theta into again another sin theta into d theta. So first function into integral of the second minus integral of derivative of the first into integral of the second. So this is theta square sin theta minus 2 into now I am going to integrate theta sin theta. Okay theta sin theta first function is what? sin i mean theta second function is sin theta first function into integral of the second that is minus of cos theta first function into integral of the second minus integral of derivative of the first in the derivative of theta is 1 into integral of the second cos theta d theta okay now this 2 is there for d theta also okay now this is equal to theta square sin theta minus of minus plus 2 theta cos theta minus of this minus and this minus makes it plus but still there is a negative outside that makes minus 2 into integral of cos theta d theta. Okay so this is theta square into sin theta plus 2 theta cos theta minus 2 into integral of cos theta again it is sin theta plus c. So, this is equal to theta square. Theta square means what? Sin inverse of x the square into into what is sin x sin theta? That is x. I have split it and written here. It is x plus 2 into theta is sin inverse of x. Right? Into root of cos theta is what? x is sin theta so cos theta is 1 minus x square minus 2 into sin theta is x plus c. So this gives you the 
final value after integrating sin inverse of x the whole square into dx. Okay, go through it. Now, we are going to discuss on the integral. If it is of the form integral of e raised to x into f of x plus f dash of x into dx. If the integral is of the form e raised to x into f of x plus f dash of x into dx, then this integral will be equal to e raised to x into f of x plus c. Okay? So, this is the formula. If integral e raised to x f of x plus f dash of x dx is given, the integral is e raised to x into f of x. That is, along with e raised to x, if the function as well as its derivative is given, Okay, the expression is of the sum of the function and its derivative. Then the integral is of the form e raised to x into f of x plus e. For example, I may write this as e raised to x into sin x. What is the derivative of sin x? I have it as cos x. Okay, into dx. Now, this is also equal to e raised to x into sin x plus uh, dx plus Integral e raised to x into cos x dx, isn't it? Now I will integrate this part. Which is the first function? I late. So this is the first function. This is the second function. First function into integral of the second. First function sin x into integral of the second. Minus integral of derivative of sin x is cos x into integral of the second is e raised to x into dx. Plus integral of e raised to x into cos x dx. Now here you see this and this cancels to give me e raised to x into sin x plus c. Got it? That is e raised to x into f of x plus f dash of x into dx is giving you e raised to x into f of x plus c. Another question if you want I can give you that is integral of the form e raised to x into 1 plus sin x by 1 plus cos x into dx. Now this could be written as integral of e raised to x by 1 plus cos x into dx plus integral of e raised to x into sin x by 1 plus cos x into dx. Now this is equal to integral of e raised to x into 1, my, 1 plus cos x can be written as what? 2 cos squared x by 2. Isn't it or not? Into dx plus integral of e raised to x into. Sin x I will write it as 2 sin x by 2 cos x by 2 by 2 cos squared x by 2. Okay. So 1 of the cos x, cancel, cos x by 2 cancel. Sorry. I just made it in a hurry. So sin x by 2. 2 and 2 cancels. So this gives me e raised to x. Of course 1 by 2 is outside here. e raised to x into c x squared x by 2 into dx plus integral of e raised to x into what will you get here? tan x by 2 into dx. Now this is in the simplest form. If you look at c x squared x by 2's derivative is tan x by 2. Of course you have a 1 by 2 here. Okay. Now let's see. So, this is 1 by 2 times. I am going to integrate this. This part, I am keeping this part as it is. First function, which will be the first function? Yes, this is the first function. This is the second function. First function into integral of the second. Here, yeah, this is box. First function into integral of the second minus integral of derivative of the first. That is tan x by 2 by 1 by 2 into e raised to x into dx plus integral of e raised to x into tan x by 2 into dx. Now this is equal to 1 by 2 times e raised to x into c squared x by 2 minus 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 cancels integral of tan x by 2 e raised to x into dx plus e raised to x into tan x by 2 into dx. Now if you look at these two parts cancel. So because both are the same. I get the answer as e raised to x e squared x by 2 by 2 plus c. So this gives me the integral. Am I clear? 
Now we come to some special integrals. Okay, it is nothing but four more formulas are coming up, which is very important when we move on to application of integrals. In application of integrals, we will be dealing with the formulas of this type only. Now, in your textbook, you can refer to page number three twenty eight. 328 and 329 you will find three formulas there sorry there is no four, four, fourth formula there is only three formulas three formulas there which is of the form root of x square minus a square dx is equal to x by 2 into root of x square minus a square minus a square by 2 into log of x plus root of x square minus a square plus c and integral root of x square plus a square dx is equal to x by 2 into root of x square plus a square plus a square by 2 into log of x plus root of x square plus a square plus c. And finally, the third one is root of x square, uh, a square minus x square dx is equal to x by 2 into root of a square minus x square plus a square by 2 into sine inverse of x by 2 plus c. Now, here in these questions, if it is of the form root of ax square plus bx plus c, what did we do? Whenever we encountered a, a square of ax square plus bx plus c, didn't we uh, write it as uh, square? I mean, completing the square roots. Hmm? We wrote it as completing the square roots by adding and subtracting the term b by 2a the whole square b by 2a the whole square was added to the second term and it was subtracted from the third term. I hope you remember. Exactly the same way here also we will be completing it into uh, uh, x square plus or minus a square. And we will be applying these three formulas which is given. Okay, I shall give you one of this question as an example. The next exercise is absolutely the same. Just applying the completing the square root method into these problems. Always remember the quotient, uh, sorry, the coefficient of x square must always be 1 when you complete the square. Okay. And then you add b by 2 a the whole square to the third, second term subtracted from the third term. Add it to the second term subtracted from the third term to complete the square and apply these three formulas which is given. Okay. Now shall we discuss one example here? Okay. So that is I am going to uh, discuss on integrating integral of root of root of 3 minus 2x minus x square into dx. I repeat. Uh, 3 minus 2x minus x square into dx. Now here I may write this as integral of root of 3 minus x square minus no plus 2x into dx. Now what is b by 2a? b by 2a the whole square. Yes that is 2 by 2. The square that is giving you 1. That gives me Integral of root of 3 minus 1. No, uh, let me first write this part. x square plus 2x. If I write plus 1 here, what is it, what am I doing here? I am subtracting 1, isn't it? So, I write plus 1 here. All these I had discussed in the last video. So, integral of root of 4 minus x plus 1 the whole square into dx. Now, this is of the form integral of root of 2 square minus x plus 1 the whole square into dx. Now, which is of this form? This is of the form root of a square minus x square. Now, according to the formula root of a square minus x square is equal to applying the formula it is x by 2 into root of a square minus x square plus a square by 2 into sine inverse of x by a plus c. Okay, so applying this over here, I'll get this as x by 2, that is x plus 1 by 2 into root of a square minus x square. I can even write this expression is also fine here. What? 3 minus 2x minus x square plus a square by 2. What is A here? 4. Ah, I am sorry. Uh, a square is A is 2. 2 square is 4. 4 by 2 into sine inverse of X by A plus C. So 2 goes here twice and this gives you the integral of this thing. 
Okay, so all the questions, there are quite few questions only in the next exercise, that is exercise 7.7, .7. carries just 7.